Welcome to the Workshed! Let's take a look at the history of the Nintendo handheld consoles. To be considered a console, we're talking about cartridge-based multi-game platforms. So sorry, Mini Classics, Pocket Pikachu, also known as Pokemon Pikachu, Pocket Pikachu 2, Pokemon Mini, or Pokewalker. Man, do people like Pokemon? The only exception to those rules is the thing that started it all. The Game & Watch series that was released between 1980 till 1991. They were designed by the great Gunpei Yokoi, who was inspired while watching a bored businessman playing with a calculator while on a train. There were 60 different games and over 43.4 million units were sold. They ran off of LR4X button batteries. The very first one was Ball and the modern D-pad was invented for Donkey Kong in 1982. Multiple companies helped Nintendo create their Game & Watch units including Mego, CGL, JI2L, Futuretronics, Burn and & Grabber and & Company, and Video Posh. In 1989, Gunpei Yukoi created the one that started it all, the Game Boy. It's an 8-bit handheld with a 2.6-inch, 160 by 144 pixel screen capable of displaying four shades of olive green. 733 games were created with Tetris being the best selling. Due to South Korea banning Japanese cultural imports at the end of World War II, the Nintendo Game Boy was distributed by South Korean company Hyundai and was named the Mini Compoy. In 1993, Russian cosmonaut Alexandra A. Sarbrov blasted off aboard a SUV TM-17 rocket to the Mir space station. Stashed among his personal gear was a Nintendo Game Boy and Tetris game cartridge. That Game Boy spent 197 days aboard Mir with Sarbrov and upon returning to Earth was auctioned off at a Russian space history auction at Sotheby's Auction House in 1996 for $1,220, which is inflated for today $1,918. January 1st, 1995, Nintendo released several Game Boy models with colored cases advertising them in the PLAY IT LOUD campaign. The PLAY IT LOUD screens also have a darker border than the normal Game Boy. In 1995, the unsuccessful Virtual Boy was also created by Gunpo Yokoi. It was originally $180, which is adjusted for inflation to be around $290 today. Only 770,000 Virtual Boy units were sold, and it weighed around 5 pounds with only 22 games released. The original prototype for the Virtual Boy was blue and was actually supposed to be worn on the player's head like goggles, which would have been a lot better. The prototype also had a screen on the controller, but the purpose for that is unknown. Even though there was an expansion port for two-player modes, the cable that made this possible was never released due to the fact that the system was discontinued so quickly. A full-color Virtual Boy was impossible to release in 1995 due to the fact that high-efficiency blue and green LEDs only became available in 1996. The Virtual Boy, which uses an oscillating mirror to transform a 1D line of dots to a 2D field of dots, requires high-performance LEDs in order to function correctly. Without the high-efficiency blue and green LEDs, the Virtual Boy was stuck with a red-only display. To make up for the poor performance of the Virtual Boy, Gunpei Yokoi made the Game Boy Pocket in 1996. Sadly, this was Gunpei Yokoi's last Nintendo product before being struck and killed by a car on October 4th, 1997. The Game Boy Pocket was a small and lighter version with a sharper screen with more black and white coloring. The link cable port was also changed to the smaller Generation 2 link cable. Two years later, Nintendo added a backlight to the Pocket and released the Game Boy Lite exclusively in Japan. So lucky! However, later that year, everyone got the Game Boy Color designed by Satoru Okada. The Game Boy Color logo has different colors for each letter in the word color to represent each of the colors the system was originally manufactured in. There was 469 games for the system, with Pokemon Gold and Silver as the top seller, and notably introduced motion controls with Kirby Tilt and Tumble. 2001 brought on the release of the Game Boy Advance. 81.51 million units were sold with a library of 1,075 games with predictably Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire as the top seller with Fire Red and Leaf Green in second, followed by Pokemon Emerald. The Game Boy Advance brought on the concept of multi-card and single-card multiplayer gameplay, where not everyone needs the game to play together. Once again, two years later, an improved version with a lit screen was released in the form of the Game Boy Advance SP. The SP stands for special, and there were actually two different models. The AGS-001 was frontlit, while in September 2005, the AGS-101 was backlit. Sadly, this was the last system to play physical original Game Boy games. 
Next, in 2004, the Nintendo DS line was born. 18.79 million systems were sold with a continuous growing library of 1,862 games with new Super Mario Bros. leading the sales. The DS is short for developer systems or more appropriately, dual screen. The lower screen, of course, being a touch screen. Impressively, the Nintendo DS was the first video game console to be played on Mount Everest in June 2005. In fact, it was one of the only pieces of electrical equipment that did not fail once during the climb, and the game that was played was Madden DS. A year later, Nintendo took a step backwards and released the Game Boy Micro, which was a smaller Game Boy Advance with a removable faceplate and no backwards compatibility. And since Nintendo likes to make small versions of previous handhelds, the Nintendo DS Lite came on the scene. This version quickly became more popular than the original DS and sold 93.86 million units. And funny enough, the white version bears a striking resemblance to the 1989 Zelda Game & Watch. In 2008 in Japan and 2009 elsewhere, two cameras were added to create the Nintendo DSi. In this new model, downloadable titles were introduced. You can find an easter egg in the DSi sound recorder. If the player keeps a sound clip paused and idle for around a minute, the DSi will play the Super Mario Bros. Overworld theme song using a pitch based on that paused sound clip. Later on, Nintendo decided to go the opposite route and create a larger model called the Nintendo DSi XL. In 2011, Nintendo invented some very impressive technology and made a glasses-less 3D screen. This was then implemented into the Nintendo 3DS. This console also had a few of its own easter eggs. Making noise into the microphone while on the system settings screen will cause the icons to spin around the wrench. While doing this, the Wi-Fi helper icon can be seen on the back of the internet icon. And of course, back to the 3DS sound app. While playing a sound file, switching to the Game & Watch soccer background and pressing any button will allow you to take control and play the game. One year later, Nintendo upped the size again with the Nintendo 3DS XL. Upon the release of the new Pokemon game, Nintendo decided they needed a system made for kids ages 4 to 6 because the 3DS three-dimensional effect is not recommended for children 6 and under. This is why the cheaper but larger 2DS was made. It actually has a single touchscreen, but the casing creates the illusion of two screens and plastic covers the top screen area to prevent it from being touched. Although the screen has no 3D capabilities, you can still use the 3D camera to take pictures. Nintendo then lost their mind and forgot how to make names that weren't confusing for everything. Thus came the NEW Nintendo 3DS. This version was originally not going to be released in America due to the XL versions of previous models being more popular, but the demand for the swappable faceplates exclusive to the normal size model brought this version to the US almost a year later. Oddly enough, no AC adapter was included due to it using the same cables since the DSi. Instead, America got the NEW Nintendo 3DS XL at the initial launch. This too you had to purchase an AC adapter separately unless you owned a previous model. The main upside to these two new models is the addition of face tracking using an infrared LED light for improved 3D viewing. And they incorporate features from the CirclePad Pro such as a rate circle pad and two extra shoulder buttons. NFC integration for Amiibo support was added along with a faster processor and more RAM for more advanced games. And now we're up to the current iteration of Nintendo's handheld portable consoles, the Nintendo Switch! The Switch is an interesting concept where it's a hybrid home portable console. It has a docking stand to play on your TV like a traditional console, but you can attach the controls to the side and play on the go like a portable console. Also, in portable fashion, games can be either downloaded or played off of game cards. Due to their physical size, Nintendo Switch game cards have been coated with Denatonium Benzoate, a non-toxic, bitter-tasting agent, as a safety precaution against accidental consumption by young children. This whole new system is a great concept, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. A few months later, to prove they weren't giving up on the 3DS library, Nintendo came out with the new Nintendo 2DS XL. This time, they ditched the bulky wedge and went with a new clamshell design. It has all the same features as the new 3DS and the new 3DS XL. The only difference is the lack of a 3D screen, and it actually includes an AC adapter. I wonder what Nintendo is going to surprise us with next.
Thank you so much for watching. Please check out some of my other gaming videos and let me know what console series you want me to explore next. And if you want to be really awesome, go buy a t-shirt from the Exit 8 T-Public Store. See you next time.